Um, the, focus, the focus of um, this month is choosing an ace in professional exams and we know I mean I mean everybody on this call I'm sure <laughs> knows what that means right um, so we are going to be talking about um, we have very important guests in our midst and um, I know personally I've been at that point in my life where I had to take a professional exam and in fact more than one so I think I can relate <laughs> so um, we have a wonderful person in our midst that is going to you know it's going to break it down just get ready to digest it soak soak it in <laughs> all right so I'm just going to give a brief intro this person that we have in our midst is no small somebody I uh, don't mind it's baby face or anything. You know, when I read his profile, Yusuf, you will agree with me that mm, this is a bump. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> no other person than Sean Daniel. Um, Sean Daniel is a financial controller in a teen tech startup. And he has about six years experience as an auditor, leading engagement in different sectors, such as financial services, manufacturing and companies in different life cycles. He has also audited one of the largest commercial banks in sub-Saharan Africa. Wow. He was previously a senior associate at PwC Nigeria. He is an associate member of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, that is ICANN, and also a qualified member of the Chartered Institute of Bankers Nigeria, that is CIBN, and he's also an MSc finance holder from Caleb University. Sean loves meeting people and he's passionate about helping people pass their professional exams in the easiest possible way. Come on, come on, come on, let's give it up. Let's give it up. I want to see the, I want to feel the energy in the comments. <laughs> yes, yeah, so you can see that um, um, if you saw one of our posts, Earlier, I think last week or this week on our social media platform, we said something about how he, you know, wrote a particular exam. He failed like a number of times, you know. So he, I feel like, I believe that he is in the best position to take us through this journey this evening. Now, help me to welcome no other person than Mr. Sharon Daniel. Woo -woo! <laughs> I should be clapping for you, but um, thank you so much. I can go ahead, right? Yes, please. I'll, I'll just go mute now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I should be the one clapping for you. Thank you so much, Okwe, and thank you to the entire DYP team. Um, I mean, I'm part of you guys, so it's, it's really a, a privilege to be here. And thank you, Tina, and every other person, right? And um, I mean, just like Okwe said, it's a very, very sensitive topic. Um, <laughs> it's a topic I'm still learning about, and even preparing for this session made me even learn more about it. And I, I mean, I'm just here to just share a bit of what I know about this topic, so this topic of passing exams, especially without feeling, and also sharing from my experience, right? So I'll just be sharing my screen. And I will just be talking about a few things. But before that, um, I would like to know, um, so thank you, and I would like to know which, um, I mean, which profession, what do we, just just drop something in the chat box. Are you an HR professional? Are you a, an auditor? Are you an accountant? Are you, a doctor? I'd just like to know where, what we do, just in the chat box, if we can do that. Uh, just the kind of the movie that we have. Okay, SS is HR, that for you, great question. Um, do we have the I'm seeing accountants okay nice to see you Victor and um thank you to everyone for joining right um so I'll just go straight into um I'm sure you can see my screen up okay, right I'll just go straight into yes I can. Um, today's one right and um yeah so I mean the topic is a very interesting topic and I'm talking about how to choose an ACE your professional exams right and I'll just be sharing a bit about um my own journey and how um, 
being a chartered accountant and the other qualifications I've had has also propelled my career, right? And I was just talking to um I was just talking to my babe just before this session and um she was saying I should talk about, I mean, my journey in different places I've worked, right? And I think I was just thinking about it that if I remove my professional certification, especially the icon I had at the beginning of my career, I'm not sure I'll have, I don't think I'll have this career I have at the moment, right? I think that people won't have trusted me with some kind of opportunities and um, I won't be where I am, right? So that professional degree has made a very big, um, a very big difference in my in my own career, right? So um, some people are saying marketing professional, okay. All right, that's fine, thank you. Um, Okay, so I'm about saying marketing professional. And um, yeah, all right, thank you. So I'll just um, go into the next theme, right? So we have some few things to talk about today. Um, who is a professional, right? And some, a couple of other things. And I'll start with who is a professional. But first, I would like to ask, what, what do we think um, being a professional is? Or who do we think a professional is? Right, I'd like to get some response on that. Who do we think a professional is? Um, like who is a professional? I'd just like to get one or two responses on that before I go ahead. Um, I mean, if you've not responded to, okay, so one, Faith says she works in the tax space. All right, that's nice. I'd like to get one or two responses on who is a professional, who, who you think a professional is. Okay, while, while I wait for that, I'll just go into my own. Um, and please, the, the this class is very interactive. Right. I want to be able to know what you guys are thinking. I want to be able to understand what you people know so that we can relate better, right? And um, the DYP said, a professional is someone that is a member of the DYP network. <laughs> yes, I, I think I agree to that. Um, a professional is someone that is, oh, Tayo Aini says, oh my God, he says someone has put in 10,000 practice hours in a specific skill, right? I think I, I like that um, definition. That definition is, I think it came from the Macron Gal Gal book. So it's a very interesting definition, right? So just like what he has said, um, someone that has spent 10,000 hours, it means that you spend time learning something, you're an expert, right? So a professional is just someone that, and I think that this part is very, very important to understanding how to even pass your exams or which professional exams to write, right? And a professional is an expert, someone that requires specific training, just like a doctor, a surgeon, a software developer. I mean, just imagine you go into an hospital for a treatment and the maybe the surgeon is telling you that he doesn't know how to carry out the operation. <laughs> I'm sure many people will freak out, right? Yeah, Victoria is saying an expert in his queue, right? Yeah. So, I mean, you freak out if a doctor tells you that he doesn't know, someone that's supposed to know what he's supposed to do tells you that he cannot do that. I mean, it's you'll be scared for your life, right? I'm sure you've seen situations where if someone loses a loved one, they most times be holding the shirt of the doctor and saying, why, why did the person die, right? Because there's an expectation that the doctor should take care of that loved one, right? And so just talking about traits of, of a professional, right? So a professional is someone that does something of high standard, someone that is excellent, someone that does something pretty well, right? And I think that um, I, I learned this when I started my career because um, it's possible for you to, I mean, be in the referral of, oh, let me pass this professional exam, whether it's your CFA or your CIPM or whatever exam, right? And you forget that there's actually a responsibility for you to actually be, to actually be a professional, like to use to be skilled in your, in your own craft, right? And we're also going to explain the difference between a professional and a certified professional, right? So the other point is a professional has a certain level of expertise, experience, and commitment in their field. So, I mean, an expert is someone that knows what he's doing. He, he, he has put in the work, put in the hours, just like Mr. Tayo has said, 10,000 hours, right? Another one says the professional is bold, daring, and audacious. And this one, this one has been, this one has played in my career a lot of times. I remember when I first started my career in 20, in 2017, it was a very funny experience. So I had spent about, um, maybe, maybe um, I spent about five or seven months, right? And the next thing that will happen was 2018, like February 2018, they told me that 
I should come and lead another engagement. I was very surprised. Like, ah, I, obviously, I didn't have that experience, right? But like I said, being a professional requires you to be daring and bold. And um, at that point, in when I joined the firm, right, five months after I joined, I was qualified. So they promoted me. So imagine that I was promoted and I was earning more than people that had been in that firm like four or five years. <laughs> like it was very funny. It was a very funny experience. Like you see people that have more experience than you and are earning lower than you just because of mass education, right? And I also remember on that particular engagement in 2018. Um, so I was the person leading the engagement, the person who led the engagement previously wasn't around, right? And my colleague on that engagement, this was like his second or third time on that engagement. And this guy had about three years audit experience and I was supposed to be the team lead. <laughs> it's very, it's very funny, but those kind of opportunities only came because I was qualified. I only came because somebody trusted me that um, I could do that, right? That was the only reason why I knew everything. Obviously, the guy knew more than, knew more than me at that point in time. But at that point, I had to just be bold and be daring and audition and say, oh, we'll do it. Because when immediately you immediately you qualify or have any certification, people just think that you're an expert. Just the way you don't expect the doctor to tell you that he doesn't know how to do this surgery. You don't expect like you as a professional to tell someone that, oh, you can't do this. So once you have that certification, that expectation just skyrockets, right? And I also talk about a professional understands sacrifice. And sacrifice just means that you have to put in the hours to be honest right you have to put in the time um you would have to put in the i mean the work to get things done i mean trust me at that point in my career where i was given an opportunity that i mean at that point in time i had to read more I had to speak to people I had to interact with people right so it requires a lot of sacrifice beyond just passing beyond just passing any exam it, it takes a lot for me to be a professional right and um they are often held to high standards of performance and continue and expected to continue learning and going throughout their careers. You know, this one is very funny, right? Because I experienced, I experienced this when I was in my first firm. And um, there was someone that had, this guy had all the certifications. He had ICANN, he had ECC, he, um, he had Diploma in IFRS, he had a couple of other certifications that, I mean, I didn't even want. I had like four, I had like one. But, Something surprising happened, right? After like two years, I joined the firm. They literally sacked this guy away from the firm. And I was asking myself that, why would they sack somebody that has all the certification in this world? Do you understand? So they sack him. And what I realized was that, you know, when you have the certifications, people are thinking that, oh, you know everything in this world. That's it's, it's an expectation. And it's given, right? So because the expert this guy has of the suspicion. He shouldn't make a mistake. He shouldn't. It's not like what is what he did was wrong. But it was wrong because of the certification he had. They already played placed an expectation on him. So they stopped him, right? Even for anybody. And people were like, ah, get yeah, your best at war. Because you have four, four certificates and you cannot even prove that you have one. So they have to let him go thinking that maybe this guy is or maybe this guy doesn't even really know what he's doing, right? So they, they had to let him go. And I realized two very important things in that point is that um sometimes right there are two scenarios you see some professionals that do not have that certifications right these are very good like they know the work like you bring any work for them to do they can do it right but they don't have certifications right and you also have the ones that have certifications but they are not professionals <laughs> like they have, all, they have masters so you some people having masters having this and like, but why is this person's career is not balancing? It's because that person is not a professional. So before you even before you even think about writing an exam, you have to first be a professional. And a professional is diligent, even now is daring, audacious. A, a professional, I mean, sticks to excellence and a high standard, right? So um, yeah, thank you for the comments. Um, yeah, such an irony. I agree. I agree, it's very, very irony. Um, so I'll move to the other part, like com comparing um, being a professional to be a certified professional. Like I've explained, a professional is someone that knows his work. Like this person is good, this person knows what he's doing, this person is on top of the game. 
right? However, like I've said, there are two kinds of people you will find in the workplace. People that are professionals and people that are certified professionals. So now, the first difference is that a professional has the work experience, but you are endless. And I've seen this many times in my career. Even when I was living in PwC, the first um, colleague I worked with, um, yeah, the person is a particular colleague I worked with, right? He was an assistant manager. He didn't promote him because, because he was not qualified, right? It sounds strange, but it actually happened. And that's, that does show that you are less if you're a professional, but you're not satisfied, but, right? But if, if you're a certified professional, that means you know the work and you have your certificate to, to back it up, you earn more, right? And that, that has been proven in my own career also. Um, the other point is a professional has the work experience, but might not be considered for promotion. I mean, there are different, different careers. For me, I'm very, very familiar with accounting where if you have this particular certification, they don't promote you, but right? they do it, they do it a lot, right? Uh, but I know that um, if you have the experience, if you're a professional, they will consider it for, for promotion once you have a certificate, right? So the next point is um, a professional has the work experience again, but misses out on big opportunities, right? But if you're certified, this person has the work experience. Sometimes might not even have it, but it will be in high demand. And trust me, since, since I left PwC in January, I've done a couple of interviews. I even did one in, in I think, Jan last in January. It's just one of my, someone, one of my family friends was like, I did an interview again. He said, I'm like, I don't know, they just, they just reached out to me. So you are, you are literally in high demand. Like, people are looking for you because you know the work and you have a certificate to back it, right? So now, um, the other point is, the professional has the, the work experience, but is managed by less experienced or certified professional. And um, a certified professional, regardless of the experience, is going to the opportunity to manage people, including professionals. So what this means is that many times you see that the, the, the people that have, the people that have the certificate ending at the top, just like in my own career, right? I was I had like seven months of the experience. This person had like two, three years, and I was the team lead. But it, it didn't make any sense. Like it didn't make any sense for me. This guy knew more than me. I I knew I wasn't even debating, but he still put me in charge, right? So it just shows that if we don't take time to get our certificate, if only we know the job, my my matter a lot of things, right? People that are lower, people that have less experience wouldn't be their leaders because they trust them. Because a certificate transfers trust, right, to you. And the next thing is, you might have a slow career advancement, right? And a certified professional has a faster career advancement. And as a professional, when you know your work, you'll be hard working, but you'll be frustrated. Like, and you have a very rigid and rigid career and very low, low negotiating power. <laughs> and for me, like, I mean, by goes, but right? I know that because I'm, working, I'm a professional, I've worked in one of the big companies, right? And I have certificates to back it. My career is flexible, right? And I work from home, right? There are some things as a professional, you get to a stage where you can call, you can call the shots, you can negotiate, you can tell them, see, this is what, this is what I want to. I think I've honestly gotten to that place in my career where you can't just push me up. And I see this is the company, I can't do it too, I'm sorry. But so it gives you high bargaining power when you have a certification, when you know your work and you have a certificate to prove it, right? Not just someone that has 10 years, but doesn't have a certificate, right? So um yeah, I just like you are saying having a certificate gives you bargaining power, just like I agree. Um so I'll move to the next part, right? Which briefly the benefits of um professional certification, right? Um, and the benefits are simple. I already mentioned them in the in the difference above career advancement, networking opportunities, industry recognition, and improving on the drive. You move faster, you you progress with, with with speed, right? And especially when you get it as early as you can. Because for me, I got it pretty early in my career and honestly it made all the difference. Like many of the jobs I've led in my first in my first place of work. I didn't, I never really had the, the, what's it called, the, the experience for it. But they just said, oh, let's qualify, let's put him. Who else are we going to put? 
And I've been in situations where people have had more experience, not even once, like twice, three times, I would end up leaving them, right? And not easy. It's, it, it's very dicey, but it has helped me, right? Because I end up the put that, it gives you the mentality that see, people trust you, you need to understand what this thing really is, right? That you need to put, um, you need to do the work to not get yourself to that level where you are a professional, right? So regardless, even if you finish your certification early, so two things are clear, you have to finish your certification, whether you do it earlier or later, and you have to actually be a professional, which is why I explained in the beginning, which is now getting work done, trying to be excellent in whatever you do, right? Um, there are common types of professional experience that we have, right? Um, I mean, it depends on the, I mean, the kind of career path you decide. I'll talk about that briefly, right? Um, so is it that you're doing project management, you have PMP, you have IJA, you have Scrum Master, you're in computer tech, you have Cisco, you're in finance, you can do ACC, CFA, and if you're a computer engineer, you can either be front-end, back-end, or engineer. There are so many other professions, right? So it just depends on, so I'll explain like how you go about deciding or choosing, right? You know, I'm thinking about this one, for me, in my own career, I think that accounting just told me. I don't know, some people, some people can choose careers, Sometimes career chooses you, like you don't even know how you end that. You just, you're just, you're just there, right? I mean, I mean, I've experienced that thing where you don't know, you, you don't know how you work. It's just one way or the other. But uh, you really can't explain. Uh, I mean, as anybody experienced that, where you just find yourself there. So for me, it was uh, uh, in secondary school, they asked me what you want to study. I don't know why I said accounting. I just said accounting. And uh, when I go to, okay, so I entered uni for the accounting. Honestly, I didn't even want to do what I can. Was was a fight between me and my dad. I made me now say, ah, okay, let me just do this accounting too. So then some of what, people are saying, yeah, um, yeah, she can relate to that. Um, some career choose you, right? Even though I was saying that, yeah, some career choose you, right? And accounting choose you most like, even me, I sometimes ask myself what I'm really doing. But, and the first point I want to talk about is choosing a professional exam is that you have to identify your career goals. You have to know the path. And to be honest, but I know that in the next five, seven years, when somebody sees my CV, and the person will be surprised that I actually did accounting, honestly, because I, really, I can already show what I want, which is the bigger part than just now. So it's going to change. I'm still, I'm still going to do what certifications that will take me to different industries, take me to different roles. Just imagine you see an MD. Sometimes you'd be surprised that this MD you are seeing on any bank. Maybe the guy even went to PWC or KPMG, right? You'll be surprised. But if you look at that experience, I mean, if you look at that, that's maybe two years experience in a in KPMG or PWC, you can't compare to how you go to an MD. So, so the point is that at different parts, at different, at different stages in your career, you would have to level up and do certifications, right? To get you to that. That end destination, right? For me, me accounting, doing that was brought me to this place. Now, the next place I'm going, I'll do something else, right? I'm going to do something else that will help me. Um, for me, for me, you say accounting must choose me for God be the cross. <laughs> Congratulations to me. So, um, the first thing is this identify what path you are on, know like the full extent, right? And so that you can be able to narrow down and say, okay, this is what I'm doing um, now. Maybe at this stage of my career, I need to do ICANN. Next stage, I need to do CFA. Next stage, MBA. Children understand, know the, know the path, right? That's if, if, if your career has not chosen you, just decide, right? Another thing you can do is research professional exams, find out their costs, look at your interests, like what are, what are you interested in? Also look at your skill set, like, okay, maybe like engineering, like, like designing, Right, you can decide to take the course, it's education in design or something, right? And um, yeah, that helps you to be able to now add a, add a particular certificate to your profession. And you can also consult with experts, consult with people that are doing other things. Now I'm even consulting CFA, and I've spoken to a couple of my mentors. I'm like, okay, what do you think about it? I'm like, ah, it's not bad. You can do some by giving different help. So it's me also consulting for my next education, right? My next career path, next career goal. Right. Um, so misconceptions about professional exams, right? And we're going down into the 
more we are part of this, right? Um, some people will say, what, what do we think about professional exams? Like, is it easy? Is it simple? Let me just know what you guys think about it. Because people have like different, different opinions around it, right? People have, I mean, people have millennials called misconceptions about it. Um, yeah, so, I mean, what do you guys think about professional exams? Is it easy? Is it one of the easiest things to do? Is it easier than your undergraduate? I'd like to know what, what your experience with professional exams, if you start writing or if you are considering anyone. Has it been scary? Has it been? Let me just know what um, you think about it. Yeah, I can also see some comments. Um, yeah, so, I, I mean, why are we looking for comments on that? Okay, they might be saying definitely, definitely not, not, not one of the easiest things to do, right? And I think that, yeah, I mean, it's a yes or no, right? Because everything is about perspective at the end of the day, right? Um, I was thinking about it today, while right? preparing that, you know, despite the fact that they say some certifications are hard, do you know that there's some people that win awards? Like some people win awards for passing like five papers at once, and you're like, who somebody win an award? I'm still struggling to like pass. But truth is, somebody's literally winning an award. Somebody's literally passing it. Right? So, so somebody's literally passing it, right? And I mean, like, you have to now ask yourself, why is this person passing? Why is this person? See, they're only too much. <laughs> yeah, it's possible that they're only too much. Right? But, but trust me, this thing is just, you know, there's so many things that. We have been allowed to believe in, believe in, but they are not true, right? They are not true. They are misconceptions. They are things that, um, so that is saying that professional education is dicey. It all boils down to one message. That's to me. <laughs> People is saying some exams won't go you. <laughs> and the truth is that, you know, it's, this is what I said to my little experience, professional exam require a lot of time and energy. Yes, I agree, right? And so I'll just talk about some of the misconceptions, right? So that we go down into it. And the first one is professional exams are tough or hard. People say that this thing is very hard. This is a lot of time, it requires too much of this, too much of that. And the truth is that the perspective I want to, I want to explain this particular thing is that, imagine a doctor, imagine, Imagine you take, take your child to the hospital and the doctor cannot treat your child because the doctor is not a professional. How you feel about it? You know, just ask yourself how you feel about it. You want to jail the, the doctor now. Do you understand? So, like, someone is trying to assess you whether you can actually go into the field and carry out a particular task and be a professional and not embarrass or, people, or put people at risk, right? And I remember, I just remember one example I wanted to say at the beginning, where um, so one time I was auditing sometime in 2019 or 2020, right? And um, I think we're about to submit like the final statement on, on Nigerian stock exchange, and we're making a couple of corrections here and there, here and there. And I don't even know how. One mistake just showed up. You know how when you're doing, trying to do one, rush, 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 rush. One mistake just showed up, right? And thank God, I was just feeling like, like we're doing too many changes. I gave it to somebody, somebody even like more junior than me. And that's one thing is when you see a professional, a prof professional, I, I see them, I see a lot in my career, right? Many people that are professionals are actually very good. Many times they are not even, they might be the younger person. So for me, I didn't even give anybody that was my, what I say, in my own position or range. I gave someone that was someone, someone that someone that they would say, oh, it's junior to me in quotes, right? But for me, I felt this person was a professional. If I gave this person something to check, he would check it well. So I gave this guy something to check. He checked it and he saw an error. When I saw an error, you know, you see some error that you almost, people that already prevented you from there, but you want to be kind because that error is, <laughs> it's too bad that, you cannot even imagine it go to the public, right? So, I mean, it was just like that for me also. And my point is that 
So you cannot you cannot take professional exams like you are writing a a primary school exam or a, no, it's, it's between life and death, right? Because you make decisions. People trust you. People trust you with their money, with their life, right? Yeah, do I be saying you feel very disappointed? Like, why would the doctor not be able to perform what's supposed to do on your child? It's so embarrassing, like it's so annoying. Do you understand? So you my point is that it is tough because it, it's trying to bring something out of you. Like, and I feel that professional exams is really, really a journey. And many times people people try to go to the end, which is just well, how that certificate. But they, they they fail to understand that the actual thing is the journey. What makes a professional is the journey, is the experience that you have, is the how much it requires from you. That's what makes you a professional, not really the certificate. Like, like I said, you find some professionals that don't have certificates. So and it's not so it's not tough. It's just trying to make sure that oh, can we trust you with this information? Can we trust you with, with my child as a doctor? Do you understand? Can we trust you with a surgery on my on, on my on my grandparents? Do you understand? So and and that misconception is that people fail a lot. And they do that many times. If you ask these people, if you ask these people, <laughs> people that fail. Many times they don't they don't read. Do you understand? Many times, right? Because very few people do the right things. Very few people do the right things. So, because people do the right things, many people that fail, they're not doing the right thing. But we will now go and say, okay, this exam is very difficult. CFA very difficult. Yes, I agree, it might be difficult. But the truth is that what are you listening to people that have failed, not people that have passed? Do you understand? You need to you need to like ensure that you are speaking to the right person, not just general information. Go on to the general information on the left. People also say it's difficult to pass professional exam by working. And I would say that, to be honest, yes, it's difficult, right? But it requires a bit of balance. And and just to explain, right, if you understand what being a professional is, do uh, you know that you can you can you can get to a level where you decide to take a break from work because of a professional exam if you understand what that professional certification or that journey will do to your career. You can decide to take a break. So many times people say, oh, work is demanding. Yes, I agree that work is demanding. But you should be able to control your work. You should be able to take charge of your work. Because if your work take, takes charge of your life, right, you might not be able to achieve that professional certification. And you might not be able to progress like you want to. You might just end up being a professional that has a lot of work experience, but cannot get value because he doesn't have a certificate. So there has, there has to be a proper balance to it. And I'll share other things that we can do in the next so couple of slides on how, how we can actually now like balance work and reading. Yes, it's a lot, I won't lie to you, but to get to a point where you have to draw the line, where you have to say, you know what, these things, this one, sorry, I can't do it now, I'm trying to do some. It has to be a fair balance. If not, we would it will overwhelm us, right? I'm not going to find that balance. But we'll talk about it right um, in more detail. So another one is people say it is stressful. Um right, it is stressful, and that's the truth. However, it depends on how you see stress, or it depends on how it depends on how you interpret what that stress is, right? So what what people term as stress is is something that is trying to bring the best out of you. It's not supposed to be easy now. Do you understand? It's not supposed to be easy. I've worked in places where I went to corner. I where I was 4 a.m. I wake up 9 a.m. Yes, I might not be. I might not be. Um, I might not be proud of it. Right? But I do things extra hours, and it has been stressful. But I mean, it has brought me to where I am, and even where I'm going to be. So, Yes, it is stressful, but it, there's some stress that you you enjoy. I don't know why you, 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 you're doing something really stressful, but you're enjoying it. I don't know whether anybody has experienced that before. I've experienced that before. Like, I experienced it a lot. Like, you're doing this work, you're tired, but you're enjoying it. You're seeing the benefit. So when you remind yourself of, of the fact that um, this professional exam will take you to a new level, 
it changes how you feel about it, it changes your stress. Yes, you stress, but you are, you are, let me just say, you are joyfully stressed. <laughs> you are not for stressed, <laughs> if there's anything like that. So another thing is, people say you only need to attend classes to pass. Like, and I realize that, especially in the accounting industry that I've noticed, right, people would, um, people, people like, people have the responsibility of preparing for their exams to the lecturers. Do you understand? Like, I'm not sure whether they don't, they don't want to, or, or what the best way to put it. Like, I mean, they rely so much on what the question them and don't go back. And one thing I'll say is that if you if you speak to that's something that I also talk about, which is support system, you need to be able to have different kind of friends, right? Don't just be for me, even if you are an average student or whatever student you have or you are, you need to have people that smart around you. You need to have people that are you know, different kind of people, ask them questions. Where are you staying? Did you achieve thing? You to be able to understand what they did, right? Some also the examiners. This one, that one. <laughs> and the truth is that imagine someone asking you a two, a two plus two question, right? So, two plus two four. If someone asks you that kind of question, you get everything. So the only reason why you think the examiner is because you probably don't know how to answer question they're asking you, right? Um, yeah, so I try not to flow too much misconceptions, right? So that we can take questions at the end. So I'll now go to general reasons why people fail in the exam. And trust me, there are way more than this, but I just carved out 10. So the first one is and I, this one I stole it from DYP. Thank you, DYP. You guys should check their content on LinkedIn and everywhere. I mean, I've been going through it and the right. So people prepare for undergraduate and professional exam the same way. For me, that's like about what one reason for it. So, you know, and, um, that thing affected me also. Right? The time I started to talk about how many times I feel like and so people say, did you really feel five people seven times? Like, even me, I thought it was easy to. But the truth is that, you remember, like when I was in uni, I was just like, just finding my way to pass, right? Just doing, you know, I got it to one. I mean, I, yeah, I didn't really deserve it, but I just, you know how it is now, I just go, right, to your exam, you read, write, pass, you get your big, get your C, everything, you just, you just, you know how you do it, you just struggle, you just pass eventually. And taking that mindset into professional exam, <laughs> um, you have serious problem. <laughs> because, see, you know, professional exam is different, it's different ballgame. Like, they want you to know everything. Just imagine a doctor. Do you want a doctor that will want to attend the syllabus to treat your child? How about now? Just so they want to do everything. everything. So they're asking you questions. So they do why they ask this question. So that's number one reason. So you need to prepare for it in a different way. And that's why many people feel like that. Many people, many people we have more clients. Or, or don't even what average, right? If you look at professional, if you look at undergraduate, maybe less than 10% of five ten finish the class. The active maybe was in their school in your class. Maybe it's like two, five people, or less than five, ten percent. So what that means is the majority of people are in the two, one, two, two, and other other categories class, right? What that means is that they've not they don't really understand how to prepare. So this issue of failing exams is many proof. Many people will face that challenge. And um, some students don't even for understanding. Like I've said, as a professional, they require you to understand. They require you to know what you are doing. They require you to be very skilled. So if you don't aim for understanding, if you just aim for, let me just pass this exam, you might have issues. They want you to be a professional and they want you to start to be a professional from the exam, right? So many people also start reading late or read few days to the exam. Like you want to cover a syllabus as wide as CFA, right? You can't start reading few days and it's expensive. You don't want to waste that money. So and also students spend, do not spend adequate time preparing as they don't study in advance. I had that issue too. Like I remember the second time I wrote my exam, I started to do like two months. 
But because I had a backlog from university where I didn't really know how to read, I was just like winging it, winging out. Almost reading for I can was like, at the point I was like, God, teach me how to like read now. Because I didn't know how to read. I've never read for two months before, three or four months. So it was a new thing to me just now. So people need to learn how to read, that's right. Read four months ahead, read three months ahead. So that's who do not study with the right material. And people are fearful and intimidated. They just said, you don't have to listen to say, right? Listen to that. I mean, I mean, for chatter accountants, I wouldn't be in the country. I mean, someone's saying, teach me how to read, laugh my ass. I mean, you have to speak to people that are actually on the past courses before you find them. Speak to them, right? Don't allow people to put fear into you for any reason. Another reason is people don't find the balance between work and preparing, for example. Like I've said, being a professional is very important for your career, right? Because at the end of the day, if you are not the professional, if you don't have certification, you will earn less and the cool right things are mentioned, right? So to ensure that you find the balance, like your work has to balance. And trust me, there are some, there are some, I've worked in some places where it's actually extremely difficult to work, like, sorry, to, to read for a professional exams. But not everywhere that are that critical. That one is very critical. Imagine you're sleeping like 5 a.m. and waking up like 9 a.m. Obviously, you cannot, there's no exam you want to read. They do not boot, right? But my point is that that will not happen every time. Sometimes you might have to take time off work, you might have to strategize. That's why it's very important to start to plan your career early, right? When you plan your career early, sometimes you can never finish the certification before you start, before you start working. And even if you start, even if you start doing it late, it's fine. But you have to find a balance. You have to be able to um, be more disciplined. It requires a lot, but it's very possible to do it. Right. Um, sometimes people spend more, so much time in extracurricular activities. They just go for weddings, events, they procrastinate, like everything. I mean, being a professional is different from, from any other thing, right? So, I mean, you're not doing every other thing. You cannot just be going for weddings. You, you have to be disciplined with your time. So, at this last two, right, academic challenges, see, yeah, honestly, I think I suffer from this a lot, where because you've not read for a while, you've not done a professional exam before, you don't even know how to read for one hour. Like you're sitting down, you're sleeping, <laughs> you're tired. <laughs> so, so people have had had that issue, like special lack of concentration issues. Like I didn't even know how to take notes. I didn't I didn't know how to write. I didn't know how to jot. I didn't know how to study well, and you have to also learn all those things. So there's the, like, professional exam is different from the way people see. There's, there's, there's an art to it, right? So you have to, if you have specific problems, you have to now, you have to now go and learn. There are some, I know, I'm a couple of things that I know that study skills need to, I mean, deal with all those academic challenges, right? But, and you do not know that you have those challenges. You say you want to start professional exam. That's the funny truth. Because you pass your BS. You pass your BSc now. By the time you now have an exam, just be like, oh, I'm pain. I'm pain. I don't understand. Then you begin to go back and say, oh, oh, oh. So we need to look at the academic challenges. Then this person and emotional challenges. <laughs> I was speaking to somebody and I was asking the person, I need to write this person's exam. This one was like, this is the class. This is the class. It could be like the exam. So it's true, like emotional, like, you know, let's leave story. Like when you feel for when you feel like twice, see, yeah, you just want to just like just, just give up on this thing. <laughs> so you have to deal with all these things. And the truth is that so the other things are lack of motivation, health concern when you lose a family member and other thing, right? Yeah, feel comes the emotional trauma. And I don't know if I've noticed this thing that happens. When you, when you try to achieve something, something big, I feel like it's the devil that just knows that. See, try to do something big, you'll not be seen in opposition. That's when your friend is doing well in battle. When you're supposed to read, for example, or go for lectures, that's when your church is doing conference. That's when you have one event. That's when you have everything just becoming that I don't tell you want to read. See, it is the it is the distraction. Like, I know distraction is like devil is setting you up. Ah, 
this man, this man, okay, put this up. So you have, but you have to know, understand that when you are preparing for, for an exam like this, or you are trying to be a professional, things will be coming up. Yes, someone is saying it's like when you are passing, then your colleague gets lunch fair. <laughs> yeah, so the session will just be things will just be making you feel like ah, or more. Can I continue? Right. So I'm, I'm going to this is my last slide for today, right? And it's on um, for me, it's a very important strategy. Um, and I could be smart for your exam, right? And I just want to in the next two, three minutes, so I will take question. And the reason I call it the smarter way is that to pass your exam is actually not hard, right? And like someone said, if you know the road, it's easier, right? The first thing that is on this, for example, the smart way is planning and strategy. You know, and I've been talking about this before. I've even written like, so I can exam to that. If I even ask myself like, this paper I'm writing, what's it about? Like, Asking me, or oh, was audit? I don't know what are they auditing. Like, I don't know anything, but I've written the exam like twice and did it. So many times people don't even understand what this lab, they don't even understand what they are even doing. Like they're just fighting the exam, just want to pass. But the truth is that the first step is really actually understanding this. I don't know whether someone has experienced this before. Where they're just fighting the exam, but you're asking them, Am I really learning yet? There's no you're not connecting it, you're just if something is just missing. I don't know whether I am whether I experienced it before. And it's about you have to understand the syllabus. So the first thing that I would I do now, even when I wrote my master's, trust me, I went through every like this course. What what is the key to learn from it? I'm not just going to just jump into anything. I'm going to understand what are the contents, what are the topics. People need to read it first. Read the go through So go to the lens of what your syllabus is about, understand the requirements. Understand what your, your examiners would learn at the end of the day. For every syllabus, you see it like what's the key thing they want you to learn. So you need to understand, like you have to first understand that before you start writing or reading or start preparing for it. That's the first thing you need to understand the syllabus and the requirements. Second thing is set a reading plan and journal. And it's time that works for you. And this one is dicey, right? Because it's, it's about discipline, right? Because if you see, oh, I want to read. Some the best to set your um the best time for you to read right is that the, depending on how your day is right if you go to work come back maybe you come back by eight every day or seven depending on how work is you can start to sleep take a rest and maybe like 11 to 1 so you take the time that you know that you're free but right? do that it helps you right and make sure that you're consistent with it it's not easy right and i'll explain how to consistent creation and another thing is you need to have your act, active reading. Especially for people that, if you have some years ago, where I didn't even know what professional exam was. I, I, I mean, I don't, I did not have a good reading habit. I didn't even understand how to read. If you, if you were like me in the past, you have to start reading. You have to, you should, you know, there's, there's some people that are actually not ready to write an exam. Like some people are actually not ready. And we're even, I'm actually building something that will help people to actually be able to examine your readiness. You don't have to, yes, I know you have a goal, right? Do you understand? You have a goal. And this is a very nice thing to say because in the past, I would usually say, oh, even if you don't feel like, even if you're not ready, just write. But the truth is, if you write when you're not ready, <laughs> see, bro, that emotional um, baggage will just be piling up, piling up. When you feel that paper like five or four times, you're thinking whether you're failure. You're not like, ha, huh, are they doing me? Someone, am I doing somebody? All those kind of things. So you want to be properly prepared to read in advance. Like for me, I would not write an exam, question exam. I'll start reading for I won't do it. Like, I won't do it. Even too much, I won't. There's no need to do it. Like, this need. Because teachers that they are actually trying to make you a professional, like someone that people would trust, like a doctor. So you can't just afford to just be doing it relaxity. And I'm not talking about it's not easy. It's definitely not easy. That's why I said that not everybody becomes a professional. I must have said it before, but not everybody becomes a professional because it's, you can't sacrifice because you giving up some things and saying this is what you want to do. It's actually not easy, but it's doable. I think the part I really like because um, 
I've also mentioned reading daily and consistently, right? Because your preparation is what matters. And see, if you pick two people, let's say me and you pick Iben now on the call, we may have different ways of reading. If I read three months for, like, for an exam, it's possible for Iben to read two months to an, to an exam and still pass and me still fail. Why? Because he has a different level of assimilation. Because people compare their preparation and it's not good. Like you can't compare how somebody prepares to how you know. The question is, do you, do you understand? Are you ready? So you need to take your time to make sure that um, you actually are out prepared by yourself, not based on anybody's level, based on your own assessment of how ready you are. But um, we're already taking time already. Um, so I'll just run through this preparation. Um, set reminders, read a specific time, attend online lectures, aim to understand. I also mentioned that. And this part, I like this part, which is have a support system. I remember that, even you know, for my dad, I probably would have passed my icon now because the one that forced me, like even sports, was the time I was crying. My dad was shouting at each other. Because like, it was like, why are you not passing? Why, why are you not in this game? But for me, I wanted to do it, but I didn't know how to. So I was just feeling. But in support system, you need friends that are serious, that can help you. Right? Um, you need to practice properly and make sure that you achieve understanding. And some few examples that before your examination, make sure that you do a lot of simulation, a lot of mock tests, because and mock test is not for you to to make you feel scared or unprepared, right? It's, it's for you to be able to get ready, to test whether you're ready, right? You need to have the right, you need to, you need to be mentally ready and have a positive attitude towards your exam. And when you go into the exam, or like especially, you need to read. People don't read instructions, read instructions carefully. Make sure you read all the questions answer. Make sure you share your time. Know the amount of time you want to spend by each paper and plan yourself, right? Make sure you sleep well, even close to the exam. Make sure you are leave. Sometimes you've got to sleep your normal hours, but just take a nap, right? And uh, maybe also review your answers before you submit. So I think a very key thing that makes your preparations right and um, yeah, easy for you to pass. So, I mean, I also, I took this quote from DYP. I mean, <laughs> so he said it would, I never said it would be easy. I only said it will be worth it, right? So, I mean, it's a lot of things you have to do, a lot of work you have to do, right? So um, it won't be easy, but worth it, right? So um, thank you everybody for staying up on the call. So I just have to talk about for, for questions. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> thank you so much, you know. Thank you, thank you. Can I see some hands in the comments? <laughs> thank you. We are so grateful, and um, I'm sure you all will agree with me that it was a very insightful session. And I know that some of the things that I I took, you said a lot of things, but I know it talked about who a professional is and what is required of a professional. Um, yeah, and no, he also touched some misconceptions about who a professional is. And most importantly, the reason why professionals, you know, fail their exams. And um, I'm sure we took notes. Um, and one, one thing that he said that really stood out for me is the fact that professional exam is a journey and the experience that comes with it, um, the experience that comes with it matters a lot. So most people are, um, more focused on trying to get to the end, which is passing the exam and moving on to other things. But really, the the journey and the experience is really what makes it worth it. All right, all right, all right. Okay, so please, you can drop your questions in the chat if you have questions. Um, please drop in the chat so that we can take it. I think there was a question earlier on that I noted as towards the beginning of the session. I'm just going to read it out. Um, okay. So the question says, sometimes we get our certificates before being a professional, maybe because of not being able to get a job on time. So how do you handle the expectation? Hmm. So so, um, so the question is, 
Okay, you get your certificate on time, but you don't have experience. Or, or what exactly? Sorry. Um. Yeah, I, that's what I can deduce um from the question, but. Um, Dami Lola, I think it was Demilade rather. Demilade, please just confirm on the chat if we are. Um, the question didn't mention you know anything about experience, but that's what I could deduce. So, Demilade, if you can hear me, please look um, Can you please look back. Can you mention again? We are okay. All right. So the question says. Okay, he said I already answered it. Though. Oh, you already. Oh, he already did. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. All right. Drop okay. the comment Thanks. now. Okay, okay. Please, any other questions you... Okay, okay, I can see one. Um, so how do you bounce back if you feel that previous failure keeps haunting you? Maybe you failed a word over again. How do you bounce back? Like, how do you keep going? Because can be traumatizing. So, um, <laughs> yeah, how do you bounce back from like previous year? So I remember um so i remember my dad asked me one very funny question the second time i failed and this time i didn't pass any paper again so it was like why are you feeling like why are you feeling and i was looking at him i'm like why are you feeling I'm like, i didn't have an answer <laughs> like so the first question is why are you feeling Jonathan, why are you feeling that question eh, it will make you think too, because you might think that answer does not even exist. Honestly, for me, for a long time, I thought there's no answer to what my feeling is the examiner. After I wrote, after I collected the extra, I've written one paper, I collected the extra sheet, I still feel it. <laughs> I said, God, God, after my life. Sorry, I'm laughing too much. But, like, so, but now to your question, right? How do you actually bust back? First, you need to know what you feel. Right, you need to know why you feel. And one of the ways you know, sometimes not everybody, will, but not, not everybody will answer for you to why you feel. So you have to find that answer yourself. So one thing you can do is first, right? When you look at the syllabus, when you try and like deduce what this thing means, right? You can be, you can have a conversation with somebody that knows this course well has probably passed it before, and try and have a conversation on okay, just like. Try and assess what you really know practically. Ask the person questions. Do this, do that. If you look at, ask somebody, okay, this particular course, maybe it's called audit. What's it about? Like, what, what are they, what's the key thing they're supposed to, we are supposed to achieve, right? You need to find out why you failed. So many other ways you can find out how to feel. But I'm saying that, at the end of the day, um, how do you bounce back? First, find out why you failed. Second thing is that, you need to really, really know why you want to actually pass that exam. Because that's the only reason why you would continue to do it. However, you must do it in a smarter way, just like I've said. And I feel like some of the things I said about doing things smarter would also help you really early. Understand this paper. Do a lot of mock tests, do a lot of tests. That would also help. And the fact that you are really going far, for me, I know where I am, but I, go there. I, need, I have a small idea of where I should be. And I know every time it increases. But the truth is that when you know where you, if it is like Alan Bank, even if you read very well and you feel, you still write it again. But now you're writing it in a smarter way. You're not just going to say, oh, ah, oh, I wrote it. So as a particular paper, I wrote five times. This time I wrote that paper. Right? So I'm saying, eh, so you don't take lectures again. Just read your textbook. Eh, thank you. <laughs> me that I've been feeling five times. You're not giving me advice. Do I even know what I need? <laughs> like, do you even know what I need? Like, I, don't, oh, I just went and did the lecture again. Do you understand? So don't. For me, if you feel so, now you need to sit down with your best. Like, do it as if, okay, this is your best that you want to give. Oh. Everything you can do. Every, every time you can. You can you can squeeze out for yourself, cut everything, right? Some people say you're not calling me. I'm not calling you. Sorry, I'm writing the exam. It's not hard. Just like make it clear, make everybody know that oh, this guy is doing something. Oh, I'm not be able to be available for four months. I'm busy. I'm trying to focus on. So when you do all those things, when you 
carve out more time for yourself. When you put in more energy and, and prepare properly, prepare at the right time, I feel like you bounce back. And with the right, and you need a support system, maybe your babe, your wife, or somebody that wants you to see. Support system is important, though, because without support system, many people will not even pass, pass, pass the exams. You just get frustrated and tired. Like, and you can get support system from your place of work, it can be your employer, it can be anybody. So that, that's what I think on how you can bounce back. All right, thank you so much, Shell. Um, I think that was an all-encompassing answer, yes. Okay, I agree with that support system part because if you are, maybe you are in a relationship with someone that is, why you are busy struggling so fast exam, person who is dragging your attention, you are not calling me, do you love me? <laughs> You have to choose between me and your exam. <laughs> you know that you're in trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Okay, so we have um, another question. Um, I am still trying to figure out my career path. I don't really enjoy the work I do now, but there's pressure to get a certification. Do I go ahead with the certification? or focus on figuring out my career paths. <laughs> this is interesting because I've been in this situation before. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, Sean, did um, you get a question? Yeah, I, I got it that she's doing something that is not in her career path. Mm -hmm. and she should not do a certification in that. To be honest, there's, let me there's, there's the pressure to do certification. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I get for me, accounting is not my own career path. Though. I'm not lying. The fact that mm. yes, I've worked in audit for like six years, it's not my career. Me, I know my career path. But what I've done is that I've said, okay, I found like I said, something some things will choose you now. As accountant mm -hmm. has chosen me, okay, let me just be a professional. Let me just be an expert. So I'm not I'm not going to lie to you that in the next five years, you see me, you you see me do something that like uh, this guy study accounting, it won't relate. But there's, there's a progression. So the thing is that you can always connect many things together. There's nothing, not, there's nothing stopping you from being a professional in something, even if that's not your career path. You can now use mm. it to extend. I don't know how far, no matter how, like, no matter how distinct those areas are, you see doctors that, I know doctors um, in the US, there's also a software engineer. He was, was the first person that did a, what's it called? An AI retina app where if you use the app, you can scan your eye and know the disease that you have. One person, wow. and he has like, he has mass degree. Yes, he has mass degree. He's a doctor. He, he has like, like two or three BSCs, a software engineer. Do you understand? So you can connect everything together. The fact that, um, yes, you may not be in that career path. It's a long-term goal. See, don't don't uh, because now see being a professional makes money for you like imagine me if i tell you my career path you might just laugh and i've known that thing since 2015 that's funny but i've been in this accounting just doing okay they say we should do versions that i've done it but i can see the progress is doing for me so my point is you can still progress and also look out for how you will merge it in the future do you understand? Because I, I don't think a career path is for me. My career is not like, oh, you are a mathematician and for 20 years you become a mathematician. No, now. Tomorrow you can learn physics. You can have physics and math. Do you understand? It's a combination, my own, my own combination. So you can mix things together. You can, you can, um, if you look at, I mean, data science. Data science is a combination of, I mean, knowing the, the data science part and maybe the professional field. Do you understand? So, for me, that's what I feel like. Uh, you can still be a professional. You can still get that education while your eye is still there because it's important. You cannot, some, when some things are choosing you, there's a reason why it says, do me now. So <laughs> just do it. Then later on, you will merge. Is a, do you understand? It's a progress. It's, it's progressive. Yeah, really. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, so yeah, I, I think I agree with you. So, um, while you are doing what you're doing, in order to progress on that role, you need to, you know, do professional certifications and, and stuff like that. So, and then you can later merge that in the future. 
Okay, thank you so much, Shell. Okay, I think we are done with questions now. Um, thank you once again, Shell. I'm just going to quickly run through the announcements uh, before we call it a night. Okay, so thank you once again, everyone, for joining this month's learning session on choosing an ASIM professional exams. Um, as you know, we, we are DYP, um, the Young Professional, and um, we are just a, all about building a community of young professionals and inspiring them and equipping them to be well-rounded and you know, to make giant strides in their industries and in whatever capacity they find themselves in. So it's a pleasure to have you here today. If you haven't... Um, Okay, yeah, Sean is, saying, Sean is saying that he would like to know what we learned to the chat box. So while I'm talking, you can drop that um, just as for more feedback for him. Okay, so um, like I was saying, if you haven't joined us already, you can please, um, I'm going to drop the link to our Telegram community now in the chat. So please do well to um, click on the link and and join the community as this community we um share we have insightful conversation and also share useful tips um do well to also follow us on all our social media platforms at dear young professional that's um we are on linkedin and instagram and also on facebook and um we turn out useful content every week and we know that as others have been benefiting from it, we know that you also benefit from it. So do that now before you forget. Also our facilitator for today, Sean Daniel, please follow him on his social media platform. I think on LinkedIn, it is Sean Daniel. And um, on Instagram, it is um, BACA. Um, Someone please help me drop that on the chat. Okay, um, so please do want to follow him. It has a lot of cool things coming up and you won't want to miss that. I'm sure if you listen to him talk, he mentioned a little bit of you know things here and there, but <laughs> I'm not gonna spill the tea. Okay, so um, yeah, so please do well to um, follow him and follow us as well for more content. And I think it is a wrap. The recording of the session should be made available to everyone that registered for this learning session. And um, that will be all from me tonight. Thank you for joining and thank you for having me. It was a pleasure um, moderating the session and do have a wonderful, wonderful night. DJ, over to you. Give us some nice music as we dance out of the room. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night and all the best.